Hi there gentle folks. Welcome to my part 2 of my little cherry video. I will zoom this in and give you a quick rundown on what I was doing on part 1. I have been working on a piece of stretched cartridge paper 120 grams in weight. I have drawn up my little cherries here and I've done a little bit of pre-planning and I've put lemon yellow at the top, cadmium yellow in the lower sections, I've got vermilion in this section around here and I've used that vermilion may come under cadmium red on your palette. I've used uh, alizarine uh, which on, on your palette may come under rose madder or even crimson lake. So I have been using two yellows and two reds and they are very blotchy when I first put them on because I'm pre-planning on where they're going to go. So on the, this cherry over here, um, and this poor cherry has taken one hell of a hammering because I've been um, calming the blotches down and showing different techniques in which you can uh, calm them down uh, all on this one poor little cherry so it's had a bit of a hard time of it right uh, not forgetting the uh, student or the viewer who's been watching uh, they've taken quite an ear bashing as well so I will be talking a little less on this uh, second part um, but what I'm planning on doing now is I'm going to de-blotch this cherry over here and start to sex them up a little maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that I'm going to add a little bit more romance into my cherry paintings now if you get a little bit lost underway maybe you too will need to go back down if you go down to this bottom uh, corner left hand corner and you'll see my image and my name click on that that will bring you to my channel and you can watch part one and after you've sat in a dark room for a little while you can come back and see what I'm about on part two. During the uh, process of painting these two cherries look, I've got them at uh, two cherries at two slightly different angles. When I come to actually paint the contours of this cherry I will turn my board and paint the cherry in this direction right. um, in order to get the contours of the cherry coming round in the right place um, that is cherry B and when I come to do cherry A I will turn my board in that direction so that I get the contours coming round like so just like I did with the apple on my still life now, when it comes to the actual um, sh uh, shading on the cherries, cherry A and cherry B, I will be in this direction so that the shading is not affected by the contours of this um, directional marks coming around the cherries. And that will also apply when it comes to putting in the shade so I will have the board upright when I come to do that little section there okay right now I have turned my little cherry into the vertical position look, as opposed to that position when I was doing cherry B and I've been sitting here calmly uh, I've turned the uh, water pump off from the fish and the postman's bin so this time I should not get any interruptions and I've been 
painting with my eyes and my brain before I got my brushes wet and I must now start making a few decisions. Right, I'm going to blotch up a, just a little bit more on this cherry uh, while I bring the two into contact with each other and I can, I can do that now because cherry B is totally dry and I will need to swing my board around a little bit I've just spotted something on my brush um, I will need to uh, s turn my board round so that I do not get any brush skidding. Now I'm already looking at this and I'm going to raise this corner up just a little tiny bit because uh, my indentation is um, out of line there. And everything about this painting is about making decisions and as in life we make decisions with the information we have at the time and whatever decision you make is going to be the right decision but of course you can always change your mind at a later date <laughs> I'm first for one first decision change my glasses um, I'm in very close here Right, I will now turn my board back upright so that the gravity drops where I want it to go. This is a number three brush I'm using here, by the way. Um, Still a little bit untidy around that area, but I will come back and I'll tick that in and give a tighter line. Okay, right now, while my, I've got that wash on my brush, I'm going to bring it over here. over here because I'm starting the blotty calming I'm now going to pick up just a little bit of my cadmium yellow wash and I'm going to drop that in there And let the two do their thing. Blend. I'm then going to let them dry off a little bit to damp in actual fact. Calm, calm, calm. Right now, I'm back uh, while this is still in actual fact damp. I've looked at this little area around there and I'm going to damp brush that little blend in. Oh. Only, look, it's in, it is a nick thing but uh, it was worrying me and I've re-looked at that area around there and I'm going to come back at that area there get my board in the right angle 
Right now having raised that um, top corner of the cherry I'm now going to raise this one and I'm coming back with a lemon yellow wash to raise that up. It's just that I want a little bit more um, modelling and shape in there. There we are, I think that will... No, I'm going to go up a little bit higher. There we are, happy with that. Right now I'm going to let that dry off before I come back down to this little section down there. And I'm now on a number one brush by the way. So happy with that corner. Let's do a little bit more calming around this area. And while I've got my lemon yellow, I'm just going to bring a little bit more of it back on that section there while that's still damp. Right now this little kiss point on the cherries, uh, that's dry. So I've turned my board upside down and i picked up my wash. I will now try to get a clean line. around that area, come out the other side. There we go, right now. I can worry about the top later on, but uh, turning my board. into my indentation there and out along the bottom. I've been very calm. I'm trying to be very casual <laughs> but look this is a, a tender moment for the cherries. <laughs> right, stop missing about. Right now I've turned my board around at this gravity angle to allow the cherries to do their thing. Right, now I've got that second cherry underway. Uh, I'm going to be chatting just a little less um, and only coming back in when um, I'm making alterations in my thinking. Um, Talking about my thinking, look, you don't have to be as daft as a box of frogs to take this sort of watercolour on. Um, mind you, you might, you might have to be just to listen to me talking. But look, let, let's put it this way. I tend to think of myself as being a bit of an old romantic. And I think you need to be uh, with watercolours. Right, now look, here is my problem. Uh, <laughs> one of my problems. Uh, I haven't got the advantage uh, which I had on Cherry B of the two cheeky cheeks. Uh, on this one, the cheeky cheeks are on the back. So I need to dip, in, give an indication that it's going to dip down the back. And on the... Um, front of the cherry here I need to get that modeling uh, sort of swelling coming out um, and cherries don't always ripen in a um, the perfect area in order to help me do that so I'm gonna have to work my way through that problem um, and I will be doing a lot of it in silence because you know what I'm actually doing and what I'm trying to achieve. Right. Is 
even when I was talking to you then, I was still doing my blotchy calming. Oh, how lovely. The unforeseen helicopter flying overhead, all trying to get her looking at my cherries. I have uh, just moved in now on my zero brush and turning my board round. I'm just going to work around that little indentation area there. Sorry about that sudden abrupt stopped on my painting there. Uh, you didn't miss anything by the way. Uh, my memory uh, card on my camcord ran out and me being as quick as a flea <laughs> stopped painting. Right now, everything is now dry again and I'm now making new decisions. I'm looking at this line coming around there on Cherry A and I'm looking at the same time on Cherry B. And look, that is samey all the way round. So I need to break that up a little bit. I've got a number of choices. I can lighten the top, but I think that will make the cherry a little bit weak. Or I can strengthen just below the kiss point. Um, and I've got the same problem there. That is very, very samey all the way round. So what I can do, I can lighten that top there. And I will be adding more weight down on the gravity area down the bottom there and because I cannot draw the, the lit area of that cherry out anymore so what I need to do now is to recede back that will give me that sort of uh, roundness on the area so I'm nice and calm thinking about it and decision time once again and I might make the right or I might make the wrong decision so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lighten this area here just a fraction down to the actual kiss point and then see what difference that makes if anything And if it is the wrong decision, I'll change my mind again. And to me, at the moment, I think I made the wrong decision. So, stop playing with it. Let it dry. So, now I'm looking down this bottom section there. And this is the name of the game. You make decisions based on the information you have at the time. And when things change, you have to be prepared to change your decisions. So let's go in a little bit deeper down on this side of the cherry down here. And I'm going back in with another wash of alizarine. And I will 
come round the bottom here just a bit. Now all I'm doing is just dropping a wash in. I'm not too worried about the gravity side of it at this moment in time. And I'm just putting back in a little bit of that lizardine back in the top. While it's still damp, by the way. And I will not go and tackle Cherry A until everything is dry, just in case it were Cherry A bleeds into Cherry B. And because I'm on the tick tick stage, I don't have to walk away and have a cup of tea while it's uh, drying off because I can move to a different area. For uh, example, um, let's say this area there where I wanted to drop in just a little bit more, I've just plonked in a little bit more of my uh, alizarine in there. And I can ease some of this out, clear water, double bowl, Get the clean fresh water and just water off a little bit of that area there. Wash again, double bowl. And I'm, I'm going to leave that little bit around there, um, that little stuff. No, I'm not. water that as well. Although I'm blotchy uh, calming at the moment, when I've actually finished I'm going to put some blotches back on. But they're going to be controlled blotches. Look, I'm just putting on more or less sort of fresh water on there and it will calm those edges just a little bit and that water will drop into the gravity area there um, where I'm going to want it uh, later on. Uh, that will also apply to Cherry B. So it's nice and dry around there. Look, I'm going to turn my board around. So I can see what I'm doing, because I'm virtually painting upside down here. And I'm just going to flood that with a little bit more alizarine. Right, now I know that I'm going to get a few more stains as a result of that. It, it really doesn't bother me, by the way. Right now the uh, puddles have dried, so now I'm going to add a little bit more weight just below this kiss point here on the uh, cherry. And in order to do so, I will turn my board around. And I've got a mixture between my cadmium uh, wash and my alizarine wash. And as soon as I've done this, I will spin my board back up the right way again. Right, spin my board so that it drops back. Gravity drops back down again. I don't want the I don't want the gravity above the um, contact point. I can now put in just a little bit more alizarine while it's still wet.
Right, happy with that. Um, and I'm just going to lighten the top a fraction. So only just visible in it. In fact, I need to get a bigger contrast there. So I've just come back with another little touch of alizarine. Now, of course, you don't have to be this fussy. Um, it's just in my nature that I am a little bit this way inclined. Uh, not with life, by the way. <laughs> I don't go nitpicking at everything. Um, at least I don't think I do. <laughs> You'd have to ask the kids about that. Let it settle there. While it's, while it's at the angle, I'm going to water this top section there. To remove that little ridge which I had around there. I've got to be careful, I can't put on any more water without uh, running the risk of it running outside of the uh, cherry. Right now it cleaned back quite nicely at this point here, um, still a little bit blotchy around here and um, I'm going to make this one a bit blotchier because I want a bit more weight around there. But meanwhile, look, what I've done, I've got clean, sparkling, fresh water. I've gone back to my large brush. I've got the camera overhead in as much as I can. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do <laughs> underwater painting. So I need a great big puddle of water on here. Just laying it on. There we go. I'd like it to come up to the edge there. It won't run outside of the painted area, by the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting underwater. Look, I'm, I'm stirring up some of my little washes here. And watercolour, it drops into rings. Um, it does that naturally. So, if that's what it wants to do, I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm just disturbing the edges. I'm only just sort of painting through the water, very, very lightly touching this, tickling it with, with my brush. And I'm going to do one cherry at a time, and then I'll come back and I'll do the other cherry. And then I'm going to move towards the stems because I'm going a little bit cherry crazy here <laughs> and I, I, I had to change my water because my water is uh, cherry water, cherry juice. Right now I'm just going to leave that on the flat let that one dry off, then I'm going to come back and do the same on this one over here. Right now, Cherry A is now damp dry. 
So I'm about to look at Cherry B. And look, I don't, if I tilt that at an angle, you look, he's got a strange little um, ring mark around there where I was dropping the gravity down in that section there. But that will come out because I'm going to flood it. Bear with me. And I'm laying that water on and I'm trying not to disturb the paint on there at this moment in time. And while the puddle is down there, I'm going to paint underwater. So, just looking for my little brush. I've got a little zero brush here. And I'm picking up the alizarine. And I'm going to drop that into the water. So I'm going to allow the gravity to take that pigment down to where I want it to go. Underwater painting, right? Get your snorkels out, right? This is going to be a first on the YouTube. <laughs> and the pigment is dropping like a sediment. In actual fact, I'm not, I can touch, touch the paper. Um, and what I'm doing is that uh, I'm allowing the watercolour to do what it wants to do naturally. Um, and it wants to create these little rings. So I'm giving it a chance to create the rings on there for me. There you go, a first underwater painting. <laughs> you got a laugh in you. I'm now going to let that dry off and do its own thing. I noticed that my water is not right up to the edge just there, so I might just get a little ring there, but I'll tick that out. Right, now that uh, little bit of underwater painting worked extremely well. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm looking at the blandness of this uh, little cherry on the side here. And I'm going to put in a couple of uh, imperfections or the ripe ripening marks on it. And I'm down on a zero, on a triple zero brush. And look, I've just um, taken most of the water off of it. And I'm just going to plonk these. I'm just going to tip these in, in the direction of the contour of the, gray, uh, of the cherry. And they are very, very small. And like on the apple, I won't want a lot of them. And I will spread them out a little bit so they don't look like a regular disease. Right. And I'll let them dry. Now, they're too small to show rings. But if they did, sorry, if they did, I would just flood the cherry again and 
and make sure that I didn't actually disturb the little pieces and look you can just see around this outer edge there there's a, a, there's a small glistening going on let's see if I can tilt this at the right there's a little glistening going on around the outside edge there and that is the gum arabic which actually holds your water, watercolours together your pigment together so I can just tick those out or leave them because the naked eye would not normally see them anyway bearing in mind nobody will get this close to your painting it's just information for you so I'm now going to move away from this little cherry I'm going to clean that edge at the top and go and get alive. I think I will need to suggest the same to you um, because you've been sitting there for a long time or maybe you haven't And you need to have a break. There we go. Just little tiny flex in there. I have also uh, underwater painted my uh, Cherry A. Um, in the same way as I did with Cherry B. Uh, but unfortunately I've lost the little clip um, but the process was exactly the same and I've also washed out and lifted a little bit out of the um, lemon yellow areas of the cherries that was also I lost that one also so I you know the process so I'm now going to move away from these uh, two cherries and I'm now going to move towards the stems. Now, I was saying earlier on that um, I didn't use a... Um, I didn't use a masking fluid. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting on a little dab of water, staying inside the cherry area, by the way. And then I will lift that out with a little tissue like so I'll do that a couple of times and then I'll get the stems underway right now on my stems I'm going to use the same technique as what I used on the rim of my glass and I've got an HB pencil here nice sharp one and look I'm only just gently touching the paper I don't want any indentation in there and I will do the same to the other one. I need to understand where it's going to come from. And it's going to come from that area there. So I'm just rehearsing it. Then I'm touching down. And I can go just a little heavier at the top. there at the division point and I don't need to draw that piece because it's a little knobbly piece but look what I'm doing is this I'll come around the top just a little bit more and then just as I did with my um, 
pencil on the first cherry vid I did, I'm going to remove a little bit of that. So I've got, I'm hoping to get different weights um, within those two stems. I've now got my ultramarine blue and I'm mixing it with a little bit of my yellow wash and I'm on a triple zero brush and to get rid of some of the water I've got a little piece of plain paper there I'll just touch it down to get rid of the bulk of the water off of my brush I will now turn my board around so that I'm comfortable and I shall just rehearse it a couple of times before I touch down. I'm trying to get my head out of the way. I shall rehearse that a couple of times. Rehearsing a couple of times before I spring out of my cherry and look it is a once again even though it's very small it is in actual fact a wash I'm putting on there and I'm using my graphite not just only as a guide but it's going to add a little bit of shading to one side right I'm comfortable at the top there so I'm going to come I'm going to put a little blob on there and then I'm going to come out of that blob along my graphite line And the moment I think my brush is going to skid, I will stop and move my board to a more comfortable position. There we are. Because I don't want my brush skidding. I want the hairs on my brush to follow the hilt. And while I'm in this position, I'm in a good position to actually draw out of this one. Oh, I'm getting myself in a hell of a mess here. Uh, to, I'm going to have to move my camera. There we are. in the way. I'm coming out of the cherry and I will have to decide, look I've just lifted, I will have to decide which stem goes in front of the other one. I'm going to go straight across that one. And I'm going to let that one disappear just a little bit then I'm going to come around at the top. Make sure my head's clear. Like so. Right, now you're not going to do this without moving your board around at some point. Um, but you won't have to worry about somebody looking over your shoulder. Right now look, if your hand is not steady enough uh, to use a brush, um, I think that would be perfectly understandable. Um, so use your pencil. Go with what you've got and what you feel comfortable with. 
Right, now I'm going to let this dry. And I'll come back again. But I'm going to be using, letting my pencil, graphite on there, do some of the work for me. And I want modelling even on the stems. So I will tick back on one particular side with my brush. But if you can't, use your graphite pencil to give you. Uh, look, I'm going to do both so that you know what is going on there. I'm making very hard work of uh, this. Um, I can't think of it. I've made hard work of the whole cherry. Right now, here I'm just cleaning my brush and what I'm going to do, while that is still damp, I'm going to lift off a little bit of that wash. That will give me just a little bit of modelling on there. I'm just drying the end of my brush now. And I'm lifting that wash off. Now, I don't know how close I can get that in. But uh, you'll see that in actual fact, there we are. Look, I've got two edges to that. And this one, I haven't got... Uh, I've just got a single line. So can I get in there? I want I'm decided I'm gonna take this one across here, so that is going to be the right now that one is fairly strong and this one is fairly weak. Now I need to come back and plant it into the actual cherry but not right at this moment. I'm now about to uh, tackle the uh, shading under the cherries and look I've got my ultramarine blue, I've got my alizarine and I'm just going to push the two together. That will give me a purpley colour. And then to kill it, just a little tiny bit, I'm taking a little bit of my yellow and neutralising it. That's to take the brilliance off of it. Just like I did on my first cherry vid. I'm now going to come in and I've got the cherries upright in front of me by the way. And I'm going to drop a little bit of sh shading underneath the cherry. Extend it out a little way. Not too far. And water the edge. So it's got no real defined edge on there. Slightly tighter one on that side there. Now, I'm going to let that one dry now. So now I can actually move back up and look at my stems. Go back to my triple zero brush and use a little bit of that shading and use a little bit of that 
add in a little bit more yellow so it's a neutral colour with a lean in to green greeny brown oh, well now if I can do this without getting in the way of the camera I'm going to drop that in not, not dark enough in the upper part of the stem and the same on the other side That gives me that little bit of uh, shadowing in there. I'm going to leave that one alone because it's not looking too bad actually. But I'm going to pick it up again as it comes around the top of the uh, heart shape there. And it's like I said earlier on, you can use your pe um, graphite pencil if you feel happier with that. Just make sure it's got a nice sharp point on it. And look, this is still a wash, by the way, I'm putting on it. It's a very gentle wash, I'll give you that, but it is still nevertheless a wash. And I'm still looking for variety, uh, even round on this little stem. So look, I'm going to let that piece go at the top there. I've let this one go down the bottom here. But I'm going to come in on this side. Stop there, because that one's going underneath. I am following it round. Now what I need to do is to join that on. So I've watered it down just a little bit more. So I can actually pick up a little bit of this. And head off. To the top here. Now, what I'm doing is a little bit strange, but I'll explain to you when I round this up why I'm doing this. So, look, it is there, but it is much, much weaker. In fact, it's even now, it's still a little bit stronger than what I really want it. So I've just picked up a little touch of water, just to ease it off. back a little stronger at the join there we are right. well I'm going to leave that alone and look here's my wash down at the bottom there and so I will now re-look at that And come in with my just bear with me while I'm mixing up a bit of color okay but then here's my second shadow going on underneath there and I'm just gonna tuck in towards the cherry take it out and the reason I let one of them dry is because I'm going to take this one over that one and hopefully it will give me a double coat just there. Right, I'm going to water that edge off as well. It's uh, a funny shape. It's starting to follow the cherry round so I need to Get it out. 
flat. Trying to look at the monitor and the cherries at the same time. Um, Right, so there's my next shadow going under there, and I was saying it's a slightly funny shape. It started to turn into a saucer type shape, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go zig, zig, like that. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of my cherry wash and just plonk it in. That, look, that's giving it a slightly warmer shadow. It's almost like a reflection of the cherry. I'm not going to do it on the other one, by the way, um, because I'm still looking for differences here. So I've picked up just a little bit of water, and I'll take that and just break that shadow there. Right. Now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come in and tuck in underneath that cherry. Right now I'm going to use my brush but as we did on the uh, other cherry vid uh, if, if you find that difficult to get in there with your brush just use your pencil, right? Um, it'd be perfectly all right. Let me just zoom this one back because what I'm going to do, wrong way, what I'm going to do is, I was saying to you, it can be a little bit difficult for you to get around there with a brush, certainly on the second uh, run round. So I'm going to use a pencil under one of these and a pencil on a bit of that work up there, and a brush on one, and a brush on the other one. Right, so this is, and you'll notice there's not a great deal of difference in it when it comes down to this sort of thing. I'm just going to add a little bit more cherry shade in there. Right. It's a little bit spiky. So I've just got a little bit of water right, and I've just softened this one edge off here and I'll just soften this but I know that it's going to run the red down a little bit so I'm going to leave it alone. Right. right. Let that dry off and then I'm going to come back. Right now, that uh, little bit of shading is now dry, look, and I've got a uh, very sharp pencil here, and I'm going to come down with, look, a tight shadow. Right now, the moment something makes contact with something, if there's contact there, that is what you get. You get that tight shadow. And it can soften off. And look, I'm trying to soften off in uh, a flat direction because I don't want it s sinking into a soft surface. Soft surface. Right, so that pencil works very well. I've now got my brush and I'll do the second cherry. And no, I've moved my camera this time to stop you looking through my glasses, right? Because my head was getting in the way. Self so, same thing, but I was using paint. And once again, it needs to come out flat. Just picked up a little bit of water. And it needs to come out flat. Because if it's n not flat, it means it's sinking into the surface and the telephone's ringing. Perfect timing. Right. Yeah, I, I can multitask. 
Hello, can I help you? No, I'm sorry, not at the moment. Um, bye bye. Well, would you believe it? It was for you. <laughs> Right, I'm just softening out, chipping away, keeping everything flat. Okay, I must have stayed around there too long because the paper will get tired. And you can just see that overlap. I managed to get on those two shadows. Very subtle, but it is there. Right now, having got away from this cherry, using my pencil, I will now just ease that one off as well. There we go. Take it out flat. And look, it's not, it's not a perfect finish on there. Look, see that little bit there? That's not perfect. Um, I'm happy to leave that. There we go. Right now, I'm now going to move up to the stems. And look, um, on this side, I'm going to use my pencil. Just sharpen the edge just a little tiny bit. I could do the same on the other side, but uh, I'm going to use my brush. Uh, I'm going to come down in here using my pencil. Actually, this pencil is so hard, it's actually uh, damaging the watercolour a little bit. So, I must be a little bit more gentle. Right, now what I'm going to do is, while well, I've got that deep shadow there, I'm just going to go into my cherry, give that little connection point, swing it out. Mustn't hang around on it too long because I will drag up the uh, cherry. Now on this side, because I've got the shadow on this side of the stem, I'm going to come in this side. This is like the little bits of salt and pepper. Right? They're very small. But if you don't overdo them, they work very, very well. In exactly the same way as it, if you spare them with your salt and pepper, they work well if you put on too much, you can't eat it. There we go. Do you know, I just don't know where I get these sayings from. They just seem to pop out. Uh, right, okay. So now we've got two cherries. I haven't finished yet, by the way. Because I need to come back, and I'm, I can come back with a little bit of um, sienna, but in this case, yes, I will come back with a bit of sienna, if I can find it. Yeah, there we are. And I need to come back in on this section here. Look, I'm not doing any detail on it there. Look, I, all I've done is just given an indication that there is a change in colour there. And then come back. A little bit heavier on my stem. There we are, that will do it, I think. Right, 
There we go. Right, now for the piece de resistance. I'll just let that dry. Right, uh, now comes the exciting bit. I'm using a little bit of Chinese white to add the bling. Now, even on this, you need to bear in mind the contours of the cherry. So I'm turning my cherry upright and I'm just rehearsing and I will follow the contours of that cherry. I will now do the same on cherry B, just adding a little bit more pigment to my brush. I'm in the way, let's get out of the way. Right now, if you um, find that after all that hard work, you've actually been <laughs> what you consider to be spoilt it at that last moment, don't panic. Let it dry and just lift it off. And you can come back again. Everything here is about patience. Well, there you have it, folks. One pair of very romantic cherries. Right, now, before I wind this up, I'm going to zoom that back just a little. And I was talking about why I was letting this line round here go. It is because the cherries are very sort of hard edged and they're fenced in and so therefore I got the opportunity around here to add a little bit of what I consider to be a little escape route um, from the point of view the cherries they don't seem to have a lot of love and a beating heart in them so I've used the upper stems around here and this is the beating heart, right? It's got life, it's got movement in it. So that's why I left that little escape route. I was planning on leaving an escape route on this cherry here, but uh, it never worked out that way. So I used the stems instead. Right, now I'm going to zoom that down again. And you can see that I've now got it off of my big board. I've now got it on my clipboard so I can move it around. I should have done that when I was doing the stems at the top, but why is after the event? Now look, these couple of little cherries on here, uh, it's not really, this video has not really been about the cherries actually. It's been a learning process for you uh, of how to recover from those awful, what you consider to be awful, blotches. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you knock all the blotches out of your watercolours because blotches adds to the charm of watercolours. It needs to look like a watercolour. But in this particular case, look, it's cherry size. Um, I'm not suggesting that you work at this small size. Um, 
you've got to be a little bit of a uptight person like myself. Being an, a miniaturist anyway, these are very large for me. But I would suggest that if you come up twice the size, um, no more than twice the size, because if you decide to put it uh, on, your, on your wall, when people approach, um, they'll see the cherries, but they'll back off uh, because they <laughs> think they're under attack from killer cherries. Right? So you, they need to be small enough to invite the person to move one step in closer to look at them. Now, it may well be that you can't work that size uh, for physical reasons, for whatever reasons. So, what I'm going to suggest that you do is um, take a photo shot of them, put them on your scanner, reduce them down to proper cherry size, and then mount them in a little um, frame there and put them on a card because these will make very very attractive little uh, romantic cards for maybe two people getting engaged or whatever uh, or even Christmas so what I'm going to suggest you do now is that take your print mount it on a piece of card don't sign your name before you print it Sign your name personally on each one, okay? Um, so what more can I say? <laughs> Have fun, folks. Um, thank you for staying with me because that has been very, very hard going for you. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye. Enjoy.